G'day guys, got a quiet minute here uh, for a quick video. Just a, uh, um, just a warning to all of you, uh, stay away from Hyundai, buy them new, get rid of them with two years left on the warranty, stay away. These particular ones are IX35, uh, but doesn't matter, it's all of them, basically uh, transmission failures, leaking head gaskets, uh, and then there's the whole block DPF thing and the EGRs and all that. So we know the iLoads are a good van in many ways, but I have not had six different uh, iLoads through here with broken timing chains and failed turbos and engines and block pickups on, 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 um, on high aces and, and other cars like that. So if you can, buy a Toyota. If not, just beware. Um, any of the modern diesels are a problem, but here we're talking about i30 petrols and stuff as well. The failing window switches, the $560 door lock actuator, even on a Honda, they're cheaper. Uh, and then there's the sort of German engineering that sort of s seems to be in these cars. So a lot of them are very hard to diagnose as well. Um, and uh, stay away. And then they're not that safe in, in collisions and that. What gets me is uh, I've got a lot of respect for John Cadogan on, on YouTube uh, and uh, whatever his channel is, but when he goes and says that the Mazda CX-5 hasn't got the value, la, 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 and he goes and pushes people to buy the Kia and the Hyundai, uh, he knows very well that their warranty and their warranty procedures are not up there, just like Mercedes and Jeep. They don't look after their customers. They never have. I've made a video years ago about it with the, the bloody eyelids and their hard, soft brake pedal problems and stuff like that. They don't look after their customers. Subaru look after their customers, okay? Subaru don't make this range of cars. So, you know, you can't all buy a Subaru. But at the end of the day, he is going and comparing these cars to a Mazda CX-5 uh, because they have more features in them, guys. You know, we all know how quick time flies, so it's all great if you're going to upgrade your car in four or five years, but time flies, especially when you're having fun, and time even flies when you're not having fun. Who hasn't experienced time just warp in this COVID era that we're in? The whole last year's just gone by. So before you know it, your car's going to be six years old with the $5,000, $6,000 transmission destruction and not to mention all that, we actually had a salesman through here last week, 2017 Kia Sorento, or whatever the hell it is, uh, complete shutdown on the highway, smoke banging out of the engine, white smoke out the back. Hyundai's now had the car for one month, uh, or Kia, and they can't fix it, okay? Not every car can be fixed so easily, but at the end of the day, these cars, we are consistently having trouble diagnosing Hyundai's. Okay, they're not the most unreliable car in the world at all. They, they, people will be saying we're crazy, but we also are seeing a lot here and we've drawn this conclusion in the last probably six months this year. So it's this year we've gone, oh no, we've told people, you know, Hyundai's aren't that bad, they're okay, they're not a Toyota, but uh, Hyundai, you're 10 years away from anything being near a 10-year-old Toyota. Uh, the reliability is not there. There's engineered failures. They are not stupid. They want to sell parts. And finally, their parts are very, very, very expensive. Unless you're buying brake shoes for a Kia Rio uh, from Kia for $56, parts on these cars are shockingly expensive, okay? And when you get 2015, 2017 model failures with failures, you can't get these parts, okay? You cannot get these parts easily. So these are available. The VNT, Variable Geometry Actuators, $600, $560. Made like absolute crap, sorry, but they are. Um, and, uh, you know, the parts are shockingly expensive on these cars. So speaking last week to our transmission people, speaking to turbo people, speaking to DPF cleaning people, um, we're realising, uh, particularly with the diesels in the city, which you shouldn't be buying anyway, um, these are nothing but trouble, guys. So this is not a diesel-focused video. If it was, I'd be talking about the faults on this car. I'm not talking about the faults on this car. 
But at the end of the day, stay away from Hyundai. We've got people coming in with five-year-old Hyundais that are breaking down, having sudden shutdowns. I got a few calls last week. Um, sudden shutdowns. I don't know what they are. And I've said to them, you need to go to Hyundai because we ourselves are struggling to diagnose these cars. And there are times that you're better off going to the dealer. It's very rare that we say it, but with a 2016 Hyundai under their so-called seven-year warranty, people don't, uh, you know, they're, they're bringing us. Like, need to go for warranty, obviously. Even if it's 2014, there are certain issues on these cars that should be dealer only. Whether or not Hyundai can actually fix them, obviously half the time they can't, but uh, do not go running around to mechanics trying to fix these cars because generally there is some reliability in these for the first years where we don't see what the dealers see. So beware, uh, obviously if you're buying the used one, make sure there's a good balance of warranty, two keys, you know, stuff like that, and, and a good service history. When they say 15,000 Ks, guys, don't do it. Go to, go to someone who's done it every nine or 10. If you're seeing 15,000 intervals on these cars, stay away. Hope that helps.